Obviously, it's the uh, Proton Congress in, in London, so I'm very interested to, to be here to, uh, uh, to meet uh, uh, other uh, scientists and, and medical people and, and partners in, in proton beam therapy um, to uh, obviously uh, catch up and, and learn about uh, some of the projects that are ongoing um, internationally and, and in the country. Um, but uh, yeah, particularly to sort of meet people and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, other colleagues. It's definitely a new practical thing for the UK, but um, it, uh, proton beam therapies, uh, the first treatments were in 1946. So um, it's been around for uh, as long as LUNAC based radiotherapy, but um, the equipment's a lot bigger, uh, you know, more expensive. And so um, whereas there's uh, something like 15,000 uh, uh, LUNACs um, worldwide, there's only, only about 40 cent centres currently. Um, delivering protons, um, but in the early days they, they were all based in physics laboratories that also treated. Um, <coughs> but in the last few years there's been a big increase in, in, uh, in centres going into hospitals uh, around the world, um, uh, and, uh, which has been very positive. There's also been improvements in technology um, with pencil beam scanning, which is the new way of delivering uh, um, protons, and also imaging on the machine. So um, actual uh, cone beam CT allows you to image the patient when you're treating, which is something done in the radiotherapy world that, that is now being adopted in proton beam therapy. Another aspect is that the manufacturers uh, develop single room solutions now, which, which could be a real game changer, uh, because uh, up till now you've had to buy you know, two, two large centers with two or three treatment rooms, probably something like $150 million. Um, but now, and, and that's a large amount of you know, capital to put down just for a centre, whereas now a single room centre could be more like $30 million. Still quite a lot of money, but, but a, you know, much more doable. And, um, uh, and so for us at Proton Partners, we, uh, that, that's, 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 that's really what we're, what we're looking to do, which is rather than just having one, uh, you know, one big centre located somewhere in the country, we're, we're going to have multiple centres um, uh, spread around the country to try and make... Um, you know, to get more accessibility for people in the UK for, for, for proton beam therapy. So uh, we're, we're, we're currently uh, uh, develop, uh, building in Newport and Northumberland and developing London, and then there'll be some more centres coming shortly. We're kind of opening in stages, actually. So um, uh, as well as the proton beam machine, we, we've got a LINAC as well, um, partly uh, as a backup uh, to the proton beam uh, machine, but also uh, to, to deliver radiotherapy on, on the LINAC. Um, and some patients could benefit from both, actually. So some patients might have uh, uh, some treatment on the LINAC and some on the proton machine. And um, we'll have chemotherapy as well. And again, uh, you know, uh, some patients will have a, a mixture of uh, chemotherapy and proton therapy. Um, and uh, the LINAC, in fact, is, is, is coming in, in, in about a week's time. So, um, and we'll be starting that service uh, at the end of this year. And then um, the proton beam hardware is coming to site um, uh, at the end of November. Uh, this year and, and we, we want to start the clinical service at the end of next year, end of 2017. I think it'll be a, a, a really nice, uh, be a really nice clinic. Uh, we've also got PET CT in Newport which is an important uh, uh, um, uh, uh, important equipment for, diag for, you know, for diagnosis um, but it also has some interesting um, applications for proton beam therapy uh, because um, uh, after someone is treated with proton beam therapy if you put them in a PET scanner you can actually see where, where the treatment was uh, because uh, um, the, uh, the protons cause, cause uh, uh, reactions where, where positrons are emitted, which are picked up by the PET scanner. Um, so, um, and, and yeah, it'll, it'll be a, 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 it, a, a... And that's one aspect, really, with, um, again, with proton beam, historically, it, they've been separate centres to conventional radiotherapy. So, um, you know, one thing that's quite interesting um, is this opportunity of, of uh, delivering treatments, uh, com you know, in combination so, um, and, and, you know, conventional radiotherapy has improved significantly in the, in the past few years as well with kind of rotational IMRT. Um, and so there are some body sites that, that could really benefit from, you know, from uh, rotational IMRT and then with a proton boost potentially. Um, and considering at the moment the cost of proton beam therapy is higher, that, that, that gives the opportunity of, uh, you know, of making it available to more people. There are some treatment sites where it's, you know, it's already well recognised internationally that, that, that proton beam is the treatment of choice, particularly um, with uh, children, young adults and some adult base of brain. Um, but I think um, um, you know, uh, in Europe certainly um, there's, a, there's a feeling and, and there's some evidence that probably at least 10% of, of patients currently treated with radiotherapy would, would benefit from proton beam therapy. Um, there's a few people speaking at the Congress, in fact we, uh, we heard uh, 
earlier on, uh, you know, in, in, that in, uh, in Holland, um, uh, that, they're, that they're developing four centres, actually, um, and, uh, and they're looking at um, uh, basically uh, a double planning uh, patient, so patient, you know, most radi a lot of radiotherapy patients will will have a plan on the on the LINAC and a plan on the proton beam, and then we use the planning system to decide uh, whether, who should get proton beam therapy, uh, based on how the planning system calculates uh, what might be the damage to normal normal healthy tissues, um, and that's that's across the board in terms of treatments. So not not just limiting it to a certain number of treatments, because um, uh, in fact uh, I, I've heard uh, Tony Lomax, who's speaking now, say that you know. In, across everybody site, depending on a patient's sort of individual anatomy, there will be some patients who would benefit from protons. Um, and it's, in, it's about making that available. So our intention at Proton Partners will be to, um, to, to double plan patients and, 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 uh, you know, so, that, so that we can decide based on the, that, that patient's particular situation and particular an anatomy if they would benefit from protons or, or would get an equally uh, good treatment on, on the LINAC. One other aspect, I guess, about protons um, in terms of the uptake. I mean, there's a big increase at the moment in the number of centres that are starting, and that will probably have, almost certainly have an, an effect on, on making the treatment cheaper. But also, um, uh, uh, there were some uh, uh, people are looking at uh, the number of fractions, number of treatment sessions that patients get. So, potentially reducing um, the number of treatment sessions on the proton machine because it, it, it can be very highly targeted, um, especially now with imaging. So you could potentially then reduce the number of set treatment sessions people have and that, that will reduce the cost significantly.